One thing about interviews at top companies such as Google and Meta is that they're going to ask some SQL interview question. That's because as a data scientist or even product analyst, you're going to be doing some work that involves building data pipeline and doing data analysis. And so utilizing SQL is perhaps one of the best tools to be able to do that. So in this video, I'm going to show you three tips that can help you write queries that are more readable and efficient. And we'll walk through an Airbnb SQL interview question together. Let's get started. All right, so let's start with the practical tips on how to write more readable and efficient queries. To get started, you need to know two tables, one transaction table and the second users table. The transaction table contains transaction ID, user ID, date, sales, and apartment, and the users table contain user ID and country. Now that we have the setup out of the way, here's the first tip. You wanna filter the table before you apply aggregation. So first, suppose that we wanna solve this problem. Get total sales per date in clothing and toys departments. And we know that we have to use group by for aggregation and where clause for filtering. Now, one way to do this is aggregate on the date and department using group by first and then applying filter. But then you would have aggregated on the department that was not necessary from the get go. So instead of applying aggregation and then filtering, it would make a lot more sense to filter first and then apply aggregation like this query. And this is a similar suggestion I like to make when you're dealing with the situation when you have a large table. You want to work with the smaller subset of the table by filtering that table and then applying some sort of aggregation. And this tip you want to use when it comes to joining as well. Make sure you filter the table and then apply joins. Now the next tip I'd like to share is that you want to simplify a complex query using CTEs. More often than not, when you're interviewing for large tech companies, they're going to ask you some medium to hard level SQL questions that might require a series of steps in order to solve it. And in these type of questions, you're often gonna be using subqueries. Now, when it comes to writing a query that requires a large set of operations, you might end up writing a subquery where it has a series of subqueries that is nested one after another, sort of like a Russian doll. And it makes it very difficult to read it. For instance, suppose that you need to solve this problem. Among US shoppers who purchase toys, use dense rank to rank the users in the descending order of total sales of toys. So if you think about how you're gonna solve it, you have to first of all, fill Filter the user table based on US users and you have to filter the transaction table based on the department being toys. Join these two and then aggregate the sum based on users followed by dense rank where the dense rank is applied on the total sales in the descending order. And as you can see, the query is somewhat convoluted to look at. And if you're dealing with a much more challenging problem that's gonna require additional subqueries, it's just gonna look a lot more convoluted. So in order to improve the readability of this query, what we could do instead is using CTEs. So we can decouple the steps of this problem by first having a CTE that's going to filter the user's table based on country where it is US, followed by another CTE where the department is equal to toys. Join these two CTEs together in order to get the aggregate sum on the users. And then finally, as a last procedure, we can apply the dance rank. So as you can see, compared to the one with the subqueries versus the CTEs, when it comes to writing a complex query, it's a lot simpler to use the CTE over the subqueries. Now the next practical tip I'd like to share is that you want to be able to use the over clause. Over clause is highly flexible. You can use it for aggregate sum per partition. You can calculate moving average. You can even get the lag of the previous record onto the current record. And in addition to questions about joins and filtering, you're going to run into a lot of interview questions that are based on using over clause. So this is one thing that you definitely need to study. Now suppose that the problem is the following. Calculate the delta between the total sales of today and total sales of yesterday. In order to approach this, we have to first of all take the transaction table and then aggregate on the date by summing the sales. So now we want to calculate the total sales of the current date versus the total sales of the last date. So we're going to use a lag function. And in order to do that, we have the following syntax, which is going to be the lag of the total sales over order by date. So this is going to create a new column called lag total sales, which is going to add the total sales of the previous date onto the current date. So with these two values, what we can do is on a per date basis, calculate the delta. And that's the final solution. All right, so let's utilize the practical tips as a way to solve this Airbnb hard level SQL question. The question is the following. Calculate the percentage change in total rentals for each property for each month in 2022. Return the top five properties with the largest percentage change. Ignore ties and return exactly five, sorted by delta change in the descending order, and rounded to two decimals. So the output that we expect from this question is going to be the following. It's going to contain the property ID, the month year, prior month, current month, and delta change. And in order to get this output, we have to familiarize ourselves with the source table. 
which is going to be the Airbnb Fact Rentals. And this table contains the user ID, property ID, number of nights, price per night, and purchase date. And right off the bat, because we're trying to count the number of rentals per year month basis, there's only two columns that we really need here. It's going to be the property ID and the purchase date. Now let's go back and try to further understand the output in this case. So the output contains the property ID, which is the raw data itself, the month year, so we need to extract the month year from the purchase date, and then there's the prior month and current month, which are the count of records or rentals per month year basis, and then there's the delta change, and the delta change is basically the percentage change. And in order to calculate that, you would take the difference of the current month and the prior month and divide it by the prior month and multiply that ratio by 100 and then that's how you get the delta change. Now at this point, in order to maximize how you use this video, why don't you actually try this question out and then leave it in the comment section below. And for the first 10 solution, I'll provide my own personal feedback about your solution. By the way, whether you are a data analyst, data engineer, or data scientist, a common type of interview question is going to be based on SQL. That's why former data scientists who worked at Bang, such as Meta and Google, created Datama.io, an SQL practice pad that allows you to practice Bang style interview questions. There are 100 interview questions carefully created with detailed solutions. Take a look at SQL question by Google. The question is broken down to product-based questions, tags, hints, and you can test and submit your query in the practice pad with blazingly fast results. And you can look at the solution written by Google and Meta data scientists. This is no doubt a must-have product for any data professional preparing for interviews. And for a limited time only, you can get a 10% off on your Datama experience by entering the promo code DATAINTERVIEW10OFF. So make sure you check out datama.io and ace your upcoming interview. All right, so let me start off by plucking out the fields that I need. So in order to get the output that we want, we have to use the property ID and the purchase date. So let me just go ahead and just write the query in order to ensure that I have the right field. So go and type property ID and I'll type the purchase date. And this is going to be from the Airbnb fact rentals. And I'm just gonna correct the misspelling here. And when I run this, I should get the property ID and purchase date fields. And the next thing I need to apply is the date format because I wanna be able to get the month year. So in order to do that, I'm gonna apply the date format function, date format on this purchase date, followed by the percent Y and percent B, and I'm gonna call this month year. So this is going to help me get the format of the month year output. So when I run this, I now have the exact year month format as the output. Now later down in the query step, one thing I also need to do is apply a lag function in order to calculate the delta change. And I can't use lag function on the month year because this is a string. And so what's going to be useful is if I have the integer of that month. And so what I'm going to do is extract the month. And in order to do that, I'll have the month on that purchased date field. And I'm going to call this the month. And let me just run the query here. Okay, awesome. Now I can apply the aggregation in order to count the number of rentals per month per property. So the next thing I'm going to do is apply some sort of a group by. But before then, one of the tips I mentioned is to filter first and then apply aggregation. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply where the year of the purchase date is equal to 2022, and I believe that is a year that I need, and then apply the group by on these three key columns, one, two, and three. So just letting you know, if you've never used this before, what this basically is, is an alias to the columns that you are aggregating on. So the one is gonna represent the first column that you're aggregating on, which is gonna be the property ID, two represents the month, and then three represents the month year. And I wanna calculate the number of rentals across these keys. And so I'm gonna add the count asterisk. And I'll call this the total rentals. And let me just go ahead and execute this and hopefully I don't run into any error. All right, so that's great. So we have the property ID, the month, month, year, and total rentals. And now that we have this output, the next thing we need to do is calculate the percentage change. So first of all, I'm gonna wrap this into a CTE block in order to really simplify this. In fact, if you had a chance to click one of the hint, that's what it suggests, using CTE as a way to break down this problem. 
So I'm gonna call this CTE as, as rental RPT as, and I'll wrap this in this parentheses. And I'm just gonna return the property ID, the month, month year, from this CTE, which is gonna be rental RPT. And let me just run it real quick to ensure that I get the right result before I do the additional step on this. All right, so what I need is the lag, basically the total rent of the previous month. So how do I go about doing this? What I'm going to do is apply the lag function on the total rentals. And it's going to be over the partition by property ID, order by month. And this is gonna be called the prior month. And now I'm gonna change the total rental. I'm gonna rename this as the current month. And let me go ahead and execute this to ensure that I'm going on the right track. All right, so this is awesome. We're on the right track. So when we look at this property ID, followed by the months three, four, and five, we see that the current month, the total number of rentals is gonna be 211. And for each record, what we see is a prior month. So for the month of May, the prior month is gonna be April. And in April, there were a total rental of one. And so the prior month for the May is going to be one. And for April, the prior month is going to be two because the number of rentals for March was two. Now for the first month of every property, it is going to be null because obviously it's missing record. So how we're gonna handle this is by qualising it. So qualis, basically, anytime it detects some sort of a null value, it's going to enforce some value onto that. So it's a way to impute missing values. So we're gonna write qualis, and I'm going to replace any instances of null value with zero. And let me just go ahead and run this. And there you go. So the last part of the solution is to calculate the percent change. And so what I'm going to do is wrap this into a CTE block. And I'm going to call this CHG RPT. And I'll wrap this in here. And let me just ensure that I have the right syntax so far. So property ID, the month, month year, prior month, the current month, from the change RPT, and then run this. And great, so, so far there's no syntax error. So now I can use the CTE as a way to finalize the problem by calculating the percent change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the difference of the current month and the prior month and divide this delta by the prior month. And one of the condition for the output is that it must be rounded to two decimal points. So I'm gonna apply a round with a place value of two. And I'm gonna call this the delta change. And let me just run this. And it's saying I have an error. Well, that's just because I don't have a print comma here. So let me just run this again. And there you go, now I have the delta change. Now we're gonna wrap this up by getting the five properties that had the largest change in rentals. Now one thing we're gonna do real quick is to filter out any instance where the prior month is zero. So we're gonna have a filter saying prior month is not equal to zero. And then finally, we're gonna order this table by the descending order of the delta change. And we'll limit it to five as we don't care about ties. So when I run this query and then submit it, voila, right answer. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more practice videos like this, make sure you check out this next one. And this one is based on Google SQL problems. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.